OK, in this second video, I'm going to be looking at the computation of interaction effects, and I'm going to finish up with uh, an example based off part of an exam question. So the next problem is to how do we lay out the signs for the main effects and the two-way interaction effects. So I'm starting here with the values that I calculated for my design of experiments table. I'm just showing the last three columns that we computed in the previous video. Now the main effects are simply the signs in the respective main effects columns. So clearly for J it's just the signs in columns J. Uh, it's minus, minus, plus, plus, minus, minus, plus, plus, minus, minus, plus, plus, minus, minus, plus, plus. It all gets a bit tedious, doesn't it? But it's fairly quick and straightforward. For column M, it's the signs in columns M, in column M. Column M. Oh, I almost said that properly. But not quite. Minus, plus, 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 minus, plus, minus, minus, plus, minus, plus, plus, minus, plus, minus, minus, plus. All well and good. Now we come to the interaction effects, and the rule is straightforward. The I cross J interaction is simply the signs in columns I and J multiplied. Minus times minus is plus, that's plus one. I'm just not showing the plus sign here. So we can compute that and it's just the same for the ones, the columns we, we've calculated using the design table. So M cross N is the product of the signs in columns M and N. Minus times minus is plus, it's even. So that's minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus and so on, and I think what we're going to see, hang on, have I got that right, M and N, that's a minus, plus, minus, plus, running out of table here, minus, plus, minus, plus. And that's our table completed and we will then be able to progress to calculating uh, main effects. Of course before we do that we would have to gather some data, we would have to run our experiments, these experiments that we've defined here in our design of table, run the experiments, apply our st techniques for warm-up if such warm-up is required, our run length, we do our replications, we gather the data and then we can use these signs in the main effects and two-way interaction columns to actually automatically get to the, the analysis. So when we're calculating these effects we can exploit the signs in the design of experiments table for main effects and two-way interaction effects in either the fully factorial case or the partly factorial case. The only difference between these two is what we divide by. In the fully factorial case, then we divide the result of our computation by two to the k minus one, whereas in the partly factorial design, we divide the result of our calculation by two to the k minus one minus p. In each case, what we're computing is the average effect as the factor changes from its minus to its plus level, or as interacting factors change simultaneously from their minus level to their plus level. Now simply done, this sim applies just the signs in the relevant columns. So the main effect E of factor I, E subscript I, is simply the response for that experiment multiplied by the sign. So it would be minus R1 plus R2 minus R3 plus R4 minus R5 plus R6 minus R7 plus R8 divided by 2 to the k minus 1. The expression shown on the right is the what's actually going on in detail, but the simple rule just runs down the signs and it produces the same result. If you want, you can have a look and you'll see it's true. This also applies for interaction effects, two-way interactions and above where we've got, for example, I cross J. We look down the column for I cross J that we've computed previously when we are setting up our design table, although we can do it after we've run our experiments, and we simply multiply what signs we find by the response. Now, in the examples that I'm going to show now, I'm just showing a single value for the response, R, 
but in practice it could be a, a large set of values. Um, it could be the results of uh, the averaging of a number of replications for more than one factor, things like parts produced, inventory level, throughput time and so on. We'll just take the simple case to begin with. So here we've got a design. I'm just showing two factors here, although there are more, uh, A and B in this case. And I've got my design of experiments laid out as we'd expect. This could be true of either a, a partly factorial design or a fully factorial design in this particular case. The point is just to see the numbers. So we can see that the main effect for factor A is going to be, or EA, is going to be minus 10 plus 2 minus 3 plus 1 minus 12 plus 3 minus minus 2 plus minus 1. Now I've just grouped together the minuses and the pluses but it's the same result. This comes to I think it's minus 23 uh, and plus 5 so we end up with 18 over, well if this is a fully packed factorial design it will be over 2 to the k minus 1 which in this case would be if we've got, uh, and we said here 2 to the 4 minus 1 OK, it's a partly factorial design, so we've got 2 to the 4 minus 1, which is 3, minus 1 again, which is 2, so we divide by 4. So this would be minus 23 plus 5, which is 18, over 4, meaning 4.5 plus 4.5. Now, what this is saying, as we move my A from its minus level to its plus level, the response changes by, on average, plus 4.5. If we're looking at a two-way interaction now, A cross B, we've computed our columns, or our column for A cross B, minus times minus is plus, plus times minus is minus, and so on, as we've seen in a previous video. And now we can simply apply those signs again, plus 10, minus 2, minus 3, plus 1, plus 12, minus 3, minus minus 2, plus minus 1. And when we do this, although I've shown it in, in the individual terms here, we end up with a result of 4 plus 4. This is unusual. I only made these numbers up, so they're not re re reflective of a real system performance, because in this case, the interaction effect of A cross B is almost the same magnitude as the main effector effect of A on its own. So in this case, uh, clearly A is a fairly dominant factor, so much so that it's dominating even with the, the, the effect of factor B. Now, factor B could actually be negative by itself, but because it works in participation with factor A, then we would probably want to set B at its plus level uh, whenever we set A to its plus level. And we can illustrate that just in a, another example. So here's uh, something that's cribbed out of an exam paper. It's only part of an exam paper. Uh, those who've done Warwick exams before, which is all of you, will recognise this would have been question four on this particular paper. Don't ask me when it was. I can't remember. So what we've got here is a table of results in which there are 16 responses, and for each response, there are the results of replication one and replication two. So in these cases, these responses are all the same value. It's 16 experiments. These are the 16 experiments in our two to the seven minus three resolution design. Okay, so that response one is experiment one, replication one, experiment one, and replication two, experiment one. So these are the individual responses that I've then averaged. So the average response of experiment one or response one is the average of 1000 plus 1200 divided by two, so 1100. And just running down there, you should be able to see that all of these are the averages of their respective responses. So we'll then use this in concert with our uh, signs in our one-way, two-way, three-way possibly interactions to compute the results, the effects. So here's our design of experiments table. Uh, in this case, part of the problem was to lay out the table. So we've just done in the previous video the computation of columns M, N and O. I'm not going to show those again. And now we've got our response there. So what we can do is we can use the interaction signs. And I'm just showing, for example, the interactions at I cross J, L cross M, and J cross K cross L. Again, we've computed these signs in the same way as was shown in the previous video. And we can now apply these to the response. 
So the main effect, main effect, or the two-way, sorry, the two-way interaction effect of I cross J is plus 1,000, minus 850, minus 800, plus 1,000, and so on. And remember, this is a fractional design, so at the end, when we sum all these values, we divide by 2 to the K minus 1, minus P. The main effect of factor I is minus 1,100, plus 850, as before. Now, the point to note here is that these two columns here are confounded. The signs in columns N and J cross K cross L are identical. And therefore, we cannot resolve the, the effect of factor N changing by itself at the same time as isolating the effect of J cross K cross L. They're alias together. So we lose that information. We can still see the main effect of factor N on its own, but we can't ask any questions about what happens when n moves from minus to plus at the same time that j, k and l also move from minus to plus. That is lost to us. So here's our main effect for i, j and i cross j. i, j and i cross j. So we just take those numbers. Obviously in a spreadsheet this is straightforward. Uh, in an exam if you have to do this I, I don't ask you to do too much. So we've got our sum for each of these columns and we divide by 2 to the k minus 1 minus p, yielding these results here. The effect of factor i changing from minus to plus is a net effect of plus 37.5. Now you may remember on the previous slide the response was parts produced and usually an increase in parts produced is seen as a good thing. So it's a good thing moving from minus from factor i from minus to plus. Factor j on the other hand when it moves from minus to plus on its own, key thing, on its own, that reduces in, um, uh, produces a reduction in output, which is bad. However, if we look at the interaction effect of I cross J when they both move simultaneous from minus to plus, we find that the two-way interaction of I cross J is actually incredibly powerful. It's plus some 137.5. This is extremely unusual, but they're just numbers. They're made up numbers. Uh, but you wouldn't often find this in practice. So the response variable is parts produced, which positive is good. OK, so what we would do is we'd set factors i and j to their plus, plus level. We wouldn't set factor i to its plus and factor j to its minus, OK, because that's going to produce a less good result than i and j both being positive. The reason here, as I said, is i cross j is large and positive. And that's it.